Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I'm back after a very long time. Um, before beginning, I would like to ask everyone to kindly pray for my father's soul. He passed away three days ago. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to um, send my father to heaven and grant him the al-firdaus al-a'la and forgive his sins, uh, accept his good deeds. And inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. There were many moments when I was thinking that I'll have to come back, inshallah, and start making videos again. But maybe the time was not uh, right. Uh, something was wrong. I wasn't able to do it. I was busy. But now is the time. So because I haven't spoken English for a long time uh, and I haven't making videos for a long time, so I thought I would start with something easy. How about that? Let's pick a very easy target. Although... Most of my targets were easy, but this one is going to be much easier. So the clown we are going to respond to today is called Rob Christian. You know him, I'm sure. You have come across this guy who's uh, obsessed with Brother Farid. Farid! Wait, 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 Farid! I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you now that you are... Uh, you are... Anyway... <laughs> Let's get into the video. But what Muslims don't like to tell you is that Hafs was a known liar, a thief, and all of his hadiths were rejected. He could not be trusted at all. Yet Muslims call him highly trustworthy when it comes to his recitation for the Quran. Funny, yet cringy at the same time, don't you think? Okay, so the first point is that Muslims won't tell you this. Muslims won't tell you this. Uh, I mean, it's quite common among Christian scholars to say the Muslims are hiding this. They are not going to tell you this. Well, guess what? Muslims are not just telling you these things. Muslims are even telling you the responses, the answers to these things. And I will leave a link of IslamWeb.com uh, explaining this idea of uh, the untrustworthiness of Hafs in terms of Hadith and why he is trusted in, in the Quran. Second point is, which is explained in the link, which I left in the description box, uh, that Hafs wasn't a known liar. It's a lie to say that Hafs was a known liar among scholars. There are few reports which describe Hafs as a liar, but these few reports are <laughs> highly doubted. I mean, it's not well established that these are authentic reports. To rely on these highly doubted reports to prove that Hafs was a liar is ridiculous is dishonest which is quite common among anti-islam clowns so the second point is Hafs wasn't a known liar liar third point is uh, the idea that Hafs hadith were rejected is there a problem and why we are trusting him uh, when it comes to reciting the Quran why shouldn't we reject his recitation of the Quran because he's not trusted in hadith and Quran is more important than hadith. Well, is there a problem there? <laughs> no, there's no problem. Why? I'll explain something to Rob and many anti-Islam uh, clowns. Uh, today in 2023, we learn Quran from specific people who specialize in the recitation of the Quran. But we don't necessarily learn hadith from these people. These people who uh, uh, are specialists in terms of Quran recitation uh, and who teach people how to how to recite the Quran, Tajweed, and all of these things, 
they don't master the, uh, the signs of hadith, maybe they will uh, unknowingly narrate weak hadith. So you cannot trust them in terms of the hadith. Even if you take hadith from them, you'll have to go and fact check. Because they may accidentally make mistakes. It won't be the same with hadith scholars. When you take a hadith from a hadith scholars, you take it for granted. For example, let's say that Bukhari had a recitation of the Quran which was rejected, for example, for some reasons. For example, I'm saying. Now, would it be abnormal to reject Bukhari recitation and accept his narration of the hadith? No, because Bukhari specialized in hadith science. On the other hand, it won't be strange to accept Hafs recitation of the Quran and reject his hadith. But it's much deeper than that. So let me show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. We know that Hafs had a teacher called Asim who died in the Islamic year 127 Hijra. He was demented, he had a very bad memory and like his student Hafs, all of his hadiths are rejected as well. Wait, 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 Rob Christian, wait. That's another lie. Because Asim's hadith were not all rejected. They were not all rejected. Some of them were accepted, some of them were rejected. So it's just 14, I don't understand these people. I mean, it's just 49 seconds of the video and already he had made four mistakes. Let's carry on. As said, Hafs was his student and learned the recitation of the Quran from him. Hafs lived between the year 90 and 180 Hijra. Asim had another student called Shoba. He lived between the year 95 and 193 Hijra. So both Hafs and Shoba narrated from their teacher Asim. In Arabic we call them Rawi, which means a reciter, a transmitter or reader who supposedly memorized a Quranic reading from his master. Some of those, both of the recitations or riwayat should be the same, right? Because both students have the one and same teacher, in this case, awesome. But what if we can show you that Hafs and Shoba differed in their recitation and had a different Quran? No, no, they shouldn't be the same, Rob Christian. No, who said that they have to be the same? You know, it's, it's a logical fallacy. <laughs> it's called a straw man. You know it. Everyone knows this logical fallacy. It's called a straw man. You create a straw man. So here's the straw man. You see Muslims? These are the two students of Asim. Their recitation must be the same. And now I'm going to show you that they are not the same. So leave that straw man aside. Should the recitation of uh, Hafs and Shaba be the same, be similar, exactly the same, because they learned from the same teacher? Well, yes, if the claim is that this teacher taught only one recitation, but that's not the case, Rob Christian. Try to read, try to read beyond Google searches. It has been reported that Hafs said to Asim that Shaba is recited in a different way than his recitation. Asim responded and said that he taught Hafs the recitation of Abu Abdurrahman al-Sulami from Ali ibn Abi Talib and he taught Shu'ba the recitation of Zer ibn Habud from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So the claim itself is that Asim taught two different recitations. In that case, the existence of variance between Hafs and Shu'ba means nothing. Means nothing, Rob Christian. Go and delete your video. How is that possible? Shouldn't both recitations be the same since Hafs and Shaba studied under and memorized the Quran from the same teacher? That's a disaster. No, it's not a disaster. For the same reason that we explained just now. Shaba or Hafs? Wait, 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 wait. Now I understand why Dr. Yasser Qadi said that the standard narrative has holes in it. No, 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 Rob Christian, even Yasser Qadi was not talking about the same stupid idea that you are telling in this video. Because the standard narrative answers this stupid question of yours fully. And there are two students, Hafs and Shaba, 
and Asim learned the Quran from two teachers, Abi Abdurrahman al-Sulami and Zer ibn Hubaysh. He taught Hafs the recitation of Abu Abdurrahman al-Sulami. He taught Shu'ba the recitation of Zer ibn Hubaysh. So the standard narrative answers this question fully. Even Yasir Qadi wasn't talking about this stupid Shubha of yours. With that, we come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And wait, wait, wait. There will be more videos in future, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.